Exodus chapter 23 verse 2 says this, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. And what I want to preach on is the sin of democracy. The sin of democracy. There are a lot of people out there that think that a government where everybody makes all of the decisions is the freest form of government, is the form of government with the best rights and protection and safety and all that. And if you're out there and you're one of those people that votes, I'm not against you. But what I'm going to express in this sermon is the danger of believing that democracy is always the most trustworthy form of government. Now, first of all, in the Bible here, it says, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Even if everyone around you is doing evil, don't you do it. Even if everyone around you is rejecting God's word, you keep reading your Bible, you keep doing what the Lord says. Even if everyone around you is making fun of you, you need to persist and follow God's commandments. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. We need to learn how to rejoice in the Lord always. We need to learn how to pray without ceasing and push forward and do what God wants us to do even if the whole multitude rejects it. Because there are a lot of people out there who will say, ah, oh, well, it's 2018. People are no longer as strict about what they believe in the Bible. So let's just loosen up what we believe. Let's just, let's start supporting everything that the Bible calls wicked. Let's start condoning everything that the Bible calls abomination. That is false. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. That's peer pressure. This could also be a sermon against peer pressure also. Don't just follow the group just because they say it's right. Now, this applies to democracy because if you can influence the multitude to do evil, they're going to take that same evil and bring it to the ballot box and vote for more evil. How do you think we got George Bush? How do you think we got Barack Obama? Because the multitude has been influenced to do evil. If I can control what's on the television, have you watching shows where the wife belittles her husband for wanting an intimate relationship with her, where there's always a child being brought into this world out of wedlock because the parents are fornicating and they don't get married and raise the child properly, where there's gang violence, where it's teaching you that guns are bad and no one should ever own them, when it's teaching all of these anti-godly messages, it's promoting the sodomites, like in a lot of these cartoons, then if people get influenced by that, don't you think they would take those same wicked values to the ballot box and vote in someone who supports all the things that they saw on Disney and Nickelodeon and all these other channels and what, what else is out there? I'm dating myself. UPN, TV One, MTV, all of these TV shows. If someone's in, if the multitude's influenced to do evil all at the same time, don't you think they'd vote for that evil? That is the sin of democracy. If the if the group is influenced to do evil, then the whole multitude's going to vote evil in. You can't base what you believe on what the multitude believes. You have to base what you believe on what the Bible says. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. It says, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Don't decline after them. Don't go in their way. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You need to follow God and prosper in the word of God. Not follow those wicked people. Not follow the multitude. Don't decline after them. Don't twist judgment. That's what resting judgment is. You need to, you need to not follow them. Now, people say, oh, well, democracy, people have choice. Well, you know what? Democracy is the same form of government that nailed Jesus to the cross. In Matthew chapter 27, it says in verse 25, then answered all the people, high voter turnout, right? Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. They were voting for the crucifixion of Jesus. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Jesus got nailed on the cross by way of democracy. You think you as a Christian can escape getting targeted? If I can convince the masses to hate Christ, then I'm going to vote in someone who hates Jesus. And now you're on the chopping block. That is not something to go after. That's why the best way to influence a country 
is to influence the conscience of the people so that no matter what form of government they're under, if they're under God's word, it'll prosper. In the book of Judges, they did not have a king. They just had a bunch of judges. But whenever they followed God's word, they prospered. In the history of the Israelites, when they finally set up their kingdom and they had kings like David and Solomon and Rehoboam and so on and so forth, it, even though they were under a different form of government, they went from having judges to having a king. When they followed God's word, they prospered. In the book of Nehemiah and Ezra and Zechariah and Zephaniah, when they had lost their kings and they were just under a governor who was ruling on behalf of a foreign king, when they followed God's word, they still prospered because it's not what form of government you have. It's whether or not Jesus Christ is the king of your heart, whether or not Jesus Christ is ruling in your land. That is what makes you prosper. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says the government shall be upon his shoulder. Jesus Christ is the real king. And if you let him be in charge of your nation, whether you have a democracy, whether you have a minarchy, whether or not you have a Republican government, whether or not you have a constitution, it doesn't matter what you have. If God's word is in the center of it, it'll prosper. And people out there say, oh, well, that's so intolerant. What if someone doesn't believe in Jesus? Look, God is not religiously tolerant. Look at the book of Philippians chapter two, verse nine. It says, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. His name is above Allah. His name is above Vishnu. His name is above Shiva. His name is above Brahman. His name is above Ahur or Mazda or whatever. Jesus Christ's name is above every name because he's the only real God that there is. Notice what it says next, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and every and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Every knee, every tongue. It doesn't say, oh, well, if you don't believe in Jesus, you can just go bow to your, nope, every knee. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's gonna take over this whole thing and his word is gonna once more have the forefront. You, and guess what? We as believers, we're gonna get our glorified body at that time, we're gonna prosper. We're going to succeed. We're going to do well in the Lord because number one, we won't have that problem of sin anymore because we're passed from death unto life and we're going to get our glorified body. But you know what? When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to rule according to his word. The law of the Lord is perfect. I don't care what form of government you have. If you apply God's word unto it and let God's word iron out that government, then that government is going to prosper and succeed no matter what form it is. But you know what? You have to take the steps. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to study God's word for yourself. You have to make the choice to read your King James Bible every day. I recommend three or four chapters a day at least so you can soak it in and absorb it. You have to start doing what God's word says. You have to start winning souls. And then you, once you get those souls won, have to teach them how to live for God so that they can bring him the maximum glory. And if we can touch the consciousness, cut, touch the conscience of the people of the land, then we will succeed. Because the Bible says, happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. If we can let the let God be our Lord, and if we can start turning the hearts of people, even, even though we're under a democracy, we can succeed for God. So stop trusting in your government and start trusting in your God because he's the one that is really in charge. I don't care what you do at the ballot box. I don't care what you do when at the town hall meeting. What matters is what you're doing spiritually. What matters is, did you help someone grow in the Lord today? Did you reach a new soul for the Lord today? That is what's going to grow our nation. We need to be the salt of the earth. We need to be the light of the world. God bless.